Okay, so today what we're going to cover is a fairly challenging question, which is called minimum window substring. So what am I given? I'm given two strings. I'm given a search string or a string S, whatever you want to call it. This is the string that I'm going to need to search in. And I'm given a character string, a string consisting of a certain amount of characters, right? But this is what all I care about. Do you see these counts right here? The string has one A, it has one B, and one C. And my job is to find the smallest window in the search string that has at least all of these characters in their respective amounts. So what the answer is you see is this substring right here. The substring that says B, A, and C. Do you see how it satisfies one A? It satisfies one B, it satisfies at least one C. It could also be this. Do you see how I added a C at the end? But the problem is that yes, we have two C's and yes, it still satisfies, but it's not the smallest window that satisfies. That window that you see satisfies, but this window also satisfies and it's smaller. So what we're looking for is the smallest window that satisfies this character chart mapping, however you want to call it. So first, let's look at the brute force approach, which is a sort of complete search to this, which is probably the first thing you would think of. And I'm going to decompose it and walk you through exactly what it would look like. Okay, so what I wrote for you here is if you did a decomposition of every single possible window, what would that look like? So this is a form of a complete search on the whole search space, which is every single window. And this is a valid way to do it. It's a very inefficient and very bad way. You would never settle on this solution, but this is something you could jump to immediately. If I want to find the smallest satisfiable window, try all the windows and take only the ones that satisfy and find the smallest of them. So here we have the decompositions. If my left equals zero, I have four windows that can be like that. If my left equals one, I'm going to have three possible windows. If my left equals two, two possible windows. And if my left equals index three, that's the one possible window. So let's look at each of these windows. These are all the windows we wanted. We would just do some sort of double for loop. The code is in the description for this approach and the optimal approach, code in the description. And well, you can see here is each of these windows we would have to check. Is it satisfying the constraints? So what is our constraints? That's our constraint. The character T, one occurrence. In my window, all I want to do is ensure, is there one or greater occurrences of T? Then that window satisfies. So we see here, first one, does that satisfy? No, it doesn't. Second one, does it satisfy? It doesn't. And then the third one, does it satisfy? It does not. And then the fourth one, does it satisfy? And we see that it does have the character we want. Yes, it does satisfy. And now let's remember the best we've done. The best we've done is four, length four. Okay, so we kept note of the best, so let's keep going. Does this satisfy? No. Does that satisfy? No. Does this one satisfy? Yes. What's the length of this? Three. Does it beat the best we've done? Yes, it does. Update our best. Okay, and we continue. Now our left, we plant it at two, and we explore all the right windows. So now, A, does that satisfy? No. A, T, does that satisfy? Yes, it does. Did it beat our best? Yes, a length of two. So it becomes two, okay? And then we have just the left of three and then just this string. So does this satisfy? Yes, it does. Does it beat our best? Yes. And in reality, the way the code it does it in the description and the way you'd actually do it, you would keep the left and right boundaries of where you found the best. So you could chop a substring and return it to your caller. So. That, that's just a detail, but this is the brute force approach, right? We go through all the windows, but to, in order to see the problem, what we need to do is do an analysis on this approach. So let's analyze why this is a less optimal solution and see how that leads us into the way of thinking that brings us to the final optimal solution. Okay, so to see how bad the solution is and see where the duplicate work is, remember when we're optimizing an algorithm, we think of the bottlenecks, we think of unnecessary work and duplicate work. This is not my own thing. This is from cracking the coding interview. So why don't we find where we're duplicating work? And if we can find that, maybe we can use some auxiliary space to improve the time. You know what I mean? So if our time is high, maybe we could lower the time by increasing space, keeping auxiliary data that lets us have more information during our search so we don't go back and investigate things we've already touched. So what we're gonna do is we place our left on the first window 
And we're also going to place the right on this first indice. And I want you to notice how many times has each of these indices been touched. So what we're going to do is just loosely look at how many times do we conduct a window search at any given right boundary or any given right planting. So right now we're gonna check the window from left to right, which is this window. So that's one window search conducted at this boundary. And then we're going to advance again, and then we're going to do another window search. And then this boundary has been touched again, and we'll increment this number right here. And then now our right pointer sits there. We're still exploring with the left pointer at index zero. So this window right here entails another search, and we're going to say that we've done another search up to ending at this index another time. So we increment that. And we'll do the same thing right here for the T. So now the right pointer has exhausted itself and we need to increment the left pointer and reset the right. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another window search with our right ending right there. So let's increment how many searches ending at this index have happened. So we'll increment that one to a two. And then let's increment this because we do another window search, increment that, and then we also increment right there. The right has exhausted itself, we move the left forward. We do another window search ending at this right boundary. So we increment that to three. And then another search, increment that to three. And then what we do is we do another search. So increment that to, th to four. And then we do another search at this right boundary and increment that to four. So what do you see here? What you should notice is how much we're duplicating work, how many times we're re-performing searches with our right bound ending at these indices. At this indice, when the right bound ended there, we did one search. We did two searches total with the right indice ending there. We did three searches, four searches. So that's a problem. Why are we repeating, looking at the same elements, these same characters, when we don't have to do that? If we actually looked at an in-depth analysis of this, what we could do is we could provide a lower bound for how much work we're actually doing. So this is how we could lower bound the least work we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to do a lower bound, which that's the symbol for lower bounding, big omega. It's the same thing as big O, except big O does an overbound, an upper bound, and big omega does a tight lower bounding. I don't know how tight of a bound this will be, but let's continue with it anyway. So imagine we want to lower bound this. So how many left points can I choose? Well, I can choose n left points if n is the length of the search string. So let's just say I can choose n ending points. Okay, we have n points where I can put an L like this, like that, like that, like that, and like this. So as you can see, if the length of this is n, so let's write that, we can do that n times. We can choose n left points. So if I plant myself at a left point, how many right points can I explore? At the first iteration, how many right bounds can I explore? Well, I can explore n right bounds. So let me show you that, like that, like that right there, this, and that. So that was four right bounds we could do. So why don't we plant the left at the first indice, the next one? How many right boundaries can I plant? One, two, three. But three is a fraction of this. But what we're going to do is we're still going to be doing an upper bound of n work. We're still going to be upper bounded by the length of this string in terms of right points I can choose. So let's express that right here as an upper bound of the right points we can choose. So we're upper bounded by n. And I honestly don't know how formal of writing this is. I don't even know if you can actually do that, but it makes logical sense. We can choose n left bounds. And for each of the n left bounds, how many right bounds can we choose? We're upper bounded by the length of the array. So that's an upper bound of n. And when we have this upper bound of n, in the worst case, we will have n right boundaries we can choose when l is right, sitting right there. So does this make sense? n left points we can choose, and an upper bounding at each of those left points of n right points we could choose. And again, it'll be a fractional component. If l is over here, I'll have a fraction of n that I can do for my right boundaries. So what does this become? What, what does this lower bound us to? We know the least work I'm doing here. I'm not even worried about finding whether that window satisfies the string. I, I'm not even worried about seeing whether this matches against the string. That would take linear work, and if you check the code in the description, it does take linear work with respect to each string. But what you see is that the least work I can do here 
is n squared in work. So if you're in an interview, it's a good idea to analyze this. Tell your interviewer, well, I don't know how to optimize this right now, but let me tell you the least work this will ever do. Let me tell you the upper bound of work. It would be fairly easy to give the upper bound, but I think it's more exemplary of seeing the lower bound so that we know that maybe this could be done in linear time, right? So this is the least work we would ever do. This is a loose lower bound on this. So what we can do now is we can see how, how do I improve the way that I'm doing this? So it takes a little case analysis to actually see it. And, and that's why this problem is considered hard um, because it's not the most intuitive thing, but when you see it, 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 it makes sense. So what we need to do is we need to take an intellectual leap. And what we need to do is let's plant a left and right pointer right at the beginning of the array. We've been using pointers the whole time. That came intuitive to us. We already know how to use two pointers. But what we're gonna see is two pointers can actually bring us to a linear time solution with respect to both strings. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put a left and right pointer here. So what I really wanna show you is how can we get to this understanding without having seen it before? Because it, what I'm about to show you is fairly, it seems obvious when we see it, but in a high pressure situation, you probably would not come up with it. But how can you think about it the way, in, an, in a natural way, right? So we had our pointers before, we've been doing that. And what we want to do is find a window that satisfies this guy right here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to expand my window. What the heck, why not? Why not try to expand this as far as possible until I satisfy these requirements? So why don't I move this forward? And again, this is in the description, the code is in the description, commented fully, so that you can walk through this, walk through that. But either way, let's walk through this. So does this window right now satisfy? Again, we're using pointers just like before. It does not. So what can I do? Well, I can add a character. How do I add a character? Do I move my left backwards? Well, I can't go backwards. Well, why not move the right forward? So let's try that. Let's move the right pointer forward and add on this character. So what I just did is I added a character on. So, okay, I have two choices here. I can keep moving my right pointer forward or I can move my left pointer forward. But would it make sense to move my left pointer forward? This window does not satisfy. So if I moved my left pointer forward, it would make it even worse. It would not help me satisfy, right? So what that tells us is I need to keep searching. My left, my left is fine. My left is just sitting there. I need to expand my right pointer until I satisfy. And then I can worry and then I can worry about minimizing, and then I can worry about that. But first, all I care about is satisfying my constraints, my requirements. So let's satisfy the requirements. Let's move right forward again. Does that satisfy? We see that it doesn't. So we're going to continue on moving right forward. Now, does this satisfy? And we see it has an S, it has the Z that we want. So this window does satisfy. So what do we take note of? We take note of the indices. So we would take note of zero and we would take note of three, zero, one, two, three. But I'll just write the string. Okay, so this window satisfies. But my, my problem does not ask for the window substring, it asks for the minimum window substring. So my window satisfies, right? And if I keep expanding it, it will keep satisfying. Because if I keep adding characters, I already know what I already have is, is satisfactory. It satisfies. If I keep adding characters, I'm just getting longer. I'm getting farther away from the answer. So what I should do now is now our branching goes back to the left pointer. So, okay, I know I could move the right or left, but it would not benefit me to move the right now, if that makes sense. Before, the left would not benefit us. Now the right has no benefit to it because we have the window we want. So what we do is we will move the left pointer inward and we'll see, does the window still satisfy? If it still satisfies, then that's great. We beat this string and that's our new answer. So that's kind of how this, this is going to work. So at each point we're considering, what is the most beneficial choice for me? Should I move the left or the right? At this point, we should move the left. So let's move the left one inward. Does this window satisfy? Z and an S. Z and an S, it satisfies. So what we do is we can shorten this. That is our new answer. So what I'm gonna do is, 
I'm going to try to move inward again. Does this window satisfy? No, it doesn't. We're missing a Z. So what we need to do is we need to make a choice. Do I move my left inward or do I move my right outward? Left inward will not benefit us. We're right back to square one because this window does not have what I want. If I move left in, I'll continue to not have what I want. So what we need to do is we need to move the right forward and put us into the possibility of satisfying, move ourselves forward in progress, right? So let's move the right forward. We see the window is still missing a Z, move right again. We're still missing a Z, move right again. And now this window satisfies, but it's longer than the best window we've had. I don't really care about this window. So now that we've satisfied, let's try shortening it and let's move the left pointer because this window satisfies. We want to shorten it. So move the left inward. This window is still satisfiable, but it does not beat what we already have. So what we do is we are going to move left in again. Okay, and now we see that this window is missing an S. So we need to expand again. So expand the right pointer. Okay, the window is still missing an S, so expand the right pointer. And now the window has everything we want. This is satisfying. So right there, it's longer than what our best has been. So we don't want to take this. But what we do want to do is try to shorten this and keep it satisfying. So let's shorten it by moving L in. The window still has all that we want. And now we have this, but it doesn't beat our string. And now let's move L in again. Okay, and now we see ZTS. Okay, we satisfied the S and the Z, we're good. But this is the same length as this. Either could be the answer. So we just move left inward again, because these are both the minimum length. So we move L in, and now we're right back to square one. We're missing a Z, and we need to move right forward. So let's move right forward. We need to satisfy now, and the only way we make advanced progress towards that is by moving right forward. So now let's move the right forward. And now we see I'm out of characters that can put me into a position to satisfy the requirements. And therefore, my search is over. And that means my answer sits right there. That is the answer because what we did was at every single step, we made a decision. What is the best choice for me? If this window does not satisfy, I need to keep moving this way. If my window is already satisfactory, I want to minimize by moving my left inwards. As soon as the window stops satisfying my requirements, I'm back to expansion. And that's basically how this works. That's how the two pointer approach works. There's a tiny tweak in optimization you can make, which is explained in the leak code solutions. But this is the basic approach to this problem. And why don't we do an analysis of how this improves what we saw before. So let's let's try that right now. Okay, so let's do what we did before with the same string. And let's see how many searches we do at any certain indice. So let's put my left and right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do work at this window position. So let's put a one there. And I see that this does not satisfy. So I move right forward. And then we would entail work at this positioning as well. So what we would do is put a one there. And then we see this window still does not satisfy and we move forward. And again, we mark one as doing work at this window. And then we move right forward and we see now we have a winning window and we did work at this indice. So increment that to one. Okay, so now our job is to retract the window. This was our best answer, but we'll try to bring left in. So let's bring left inwards. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring left in. So let's do that. So we brought left in and this entails more work. So we're gonna increment that. Okay, and then we'll try to bring left in again. And we're still satisfying and let's increment the work done there right now. And then we're gonna bring left in again. And then that's going to entail more work and another check. So this is a rough um, amounting of the amount of times we're gonna do work at any certain indice. So this is much better than what we were doing before. What we were doing before is many, many touchings of a certain indice and doing much, a lot of work at each of these indices. But as we see, any indice at maximum can be touched once by the left pointer and once by the right pointer. So that's what this solution provides to us. It tells us that any element is never going to be touched more than twice. So that is the key to the solution and what keeps it linear in time. So let's look at the time and space complexities for this. So it's a lot more straightforward to analyze the time and space when you see the code and the code is in the description. You can look there, but we can actually conceptually just think about this. So the time complexity, as we saw the traversal itself, 
is going to be linear in time. Any single indice can only be touched at maximum two times. If we go all the way down with the right pointer and come all the way to the right pointer. So what we see is that that entails a linear time. The amount of work we do is going to scale in a linear fashion as the input gets very large. With our first approach, what we're going to do is for every left boundary, we'll have even more right boundaries to do. And then that's why that's n squared work in, instead of this being linear in work. So what we also need to take into account is that hash table I had right here takes time to build. And it would take the length of t, the length of the character string t to build that hash table, that requirements hash table. So it would become the traversal time plus the time it takes to build the hash table for the time complexity. And then the space complexity is going to be O of S plus T. Here's a worst case we need to consider. If every character in T is unique, we're going to have T hash table mappings. Every single character will be A mapped to one, B mapped to one, C mapped to one. And they're just going to have a key for each of these characters. So in terms of when would we have S, but why is S in here as well? Well, as we're keeping our running window, as you'll see in the code, we need to keep how many characters are in the certain window we're, we're, we're considering. So if you see this example right here, we would need to do the whole string as our window. If the window is ever the length of the whole string S and every character is unique, as in this case right here, then every one of the characters in S is going to have a hash table mapping. So that's why we get S plus T for space and S plus T for time. And those are the complexities and the explanation for them. So that is all for this video. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. I want to build one of the world's largest platforms for software engineers to learn because we need more resources. We need more clear explanations to these topics that are often not intuitive and not easy to understand. And if I made any like small mistakes, I probably had an off by one or something. Just let me know in the comments. I, I know there's going to be mistakes because I'm doing so many problems and I can't master every single one, but I'm okay with that as long as I can cover more problems. So 